in what has become a regular feature here on the channel. I've gone through a rabbit hole of Unity and Unreal 5 demos and gameplay previews for upcoming games to aggregate some of the most impressive looking graphics that we will be seeing soon and also concept work from artists in the games industry. So let's take a look at some of the latest innovations in graphics technology. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you could spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key from URCDKeys.com, a Windows 10 Pro key will cost you only $15 when you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and you can even get a free upgrade to Windows 11 from Microsoft. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchased orders in the URCDKeys website. Click on on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate, and then click Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, paste your key you just purchased, and click Next. Your copy of Windows is now activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 discount code and get it for just $65. URCD Keys is running a mid-year sale with some cool mechanical keyboards, gaming mice, and even gaming chairs. A big thanks to urcdkeys.com for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the description to get your cheap OEM Windows keys today. I guess we should first look at probably the most anticipated game of the year and already one of the most controversial when it comes to graphics and performance, Starfield. So firstly, let me say that 30 FPS is simply unacceptable for a game where you're going to be playing in first person mode a lot of the time, especially when shooting at enemies. So I would stay away from the console version of Starfield. It remains to be seen how well Starfield will run on older generation hardware on the PC, but having the option to reduce graphics quality to achieve 60 fps average will be a must and i don't buy the argument that the game runs so poorly because it's cpu bound as some have suggested I'm not going to go into how idiotic the pundits at Digital Foundry are, saying that reducing the resolution would have no impact on frame rate, and immediately after praising the game for using FSR2 in the gameplay shown. If FSR2 was being used, it's because changing the resolution does impact performance. Doesn't take a genius to understand that. But anyway, accepting the notion that 30 FPS is in any way justifiable will only encourage developers to continue pushing console hardware beyond what it it's capable of doing. Anyway, it's nice to see that Bethesda have been working on improving the graphics fidelity of the game, but honestly it still doesn't really look next gen to me, especially compared to some of the games and demos we'll look at in a second. It looks like a decent looking combination of existing rendering techniques, the only noticeable exception being the global illumination system, which seems pretty advanced although not ray traced, at least in the gameplay shown. I hope the PC version of the game allows for ray tracing to be used and completely replace the traditional raster techniques for shadows, illumination and reflections, as this seems to me like a game that would actually benefit from that. While usually I'm not a fan of ray tracing, because it reduces performance without a significant increase to graphics fidelity, in the case of Bethesda games, because they're not actually that good at implementing traditional raster techniques for lighting and reflections especially, ray tracing actually does make sense to be used in their engine, as it would mitigate Bethesda's traditional lack luster graphics tech. One thing that does look great is the art direction for the game's spaceships, weapons and armor, and the overall universe. The exterior environments look spectacular. I think that has always been the Thesda's strong point, but interiors and cities leave a bit to be desired in my opinion. The character models in typical Bethesda fashion look really weird and are a far cry from the stuff that people have been creating with the meta-human creator in Unreal Engine 5. For instance, instance, artist Madhav Shyam showcased motion capture with MetaHuman Animator in Unreal Engine 5 using footage captured with his iPhone running in real time. The facial expressions look a lot more lifelike and intricate than the sterile look of the Starfield characters, which in comparison look like they're from the mid-2000s game. I'm not hating on Bethesda, I'm sure Starfield will be a huge success and I can't wait to play it, but I think it's about time Bethesda steps up their game. JS Films also shared on his YouTube channel a metahuman character rigged to a cheap motion capture helmet, which is another way to skin that cat. It looks very realistic, especially the detail on the character's mouth and skin. 
A really interesting upcoming game with some stunning graphics is Lush Foil Photography Sim, a tranquil exploration and photography experience featuring realistic in-game cameras and a vast selection of faithfully detailed landscapes presented in a stunning visual fidelity. Made by a single developer, the game is available to wishlist on Steam right now. It's nice to see games that offer different experiences rather than the same old run and gun. Lush Foil is a good example of how engines like Unity and Unreal Engine 5 have democratized game creation with high production values. Another good example of a solo development effort is Backrooms the Project, an upcoming horror game that uses retro camera filters to good effect. The game is being described as an immersive first-person found footage horror adventure game. Moving away from games for a second, I found a couple of really impressive Unreal Engine 5 demos that really showcase the potential of the engine. The first one comes from Anzal Muhammad, a lead 3D artist at Epic Games. This test scene of an abandoned courtyard from the British colonial era located in Rawalpindi, Pakistan, was made using the Reality Scan app along with UE5's modeling tools. It shows how quickly one can deploy phone scan assets into Real Engine and set up a scene where you can edit those assets without needing an external modeling app. So these assets are all phone scans, which were then edited and placed inside the engine. I'll put a link in the video description to Anzal's ArtStation page, where you can see the original phone scans. It's incredible what one can do with just a mobile phone camera. Similarly, to showcase how insane the results of reality scan can be, the official channel published a scene with scan baked goods that just looks incredible. Like I said on Twitter when this came out, if food in games looks this good, I'll be having cravings all the time. I'm a sucker for bread and pastries. I'll put a link in the video description to how you can use reality capture on your iPhone or Android phone to create ultra-realistic 3D models that are editable, not edible, unfortunately. Another impressive looking demo comes from an artist I've covered before, Pasquale Cianti, and is an experiment using Unreal Engine's latest update 5.2, relighting the built-in demo Electric Dreams. The demo is available for anyone to try if you download and install UE5, but Pasquale added some volumetric fog and relighted the scene with an overcast weather and rain, resulting in a highly realistic look. Here we see his work running on an RTX 49 at 4K 60fps on high settings. I'm not a fan of the head bobbing we're seeing in a lot of these demos. I get motion sickness very easily. Another reason why games shouldn't run at 30fps, especially in first person, but enough of that. One upcoming game that has fully embraced Unreal Engine 5 is Lords of the Fallen, which is a reboot of the 2014 game of the same name. It's a Souls-like RPG that features two realms, sort of a physical realm and a spiritual realm and you can switch between the two. The use of nanite in particular seems evident here, with incredibly detailed structures. Nanite is perfect for gothic medieval style architecture with intricate details. In this indoor scene, you can see the high poly statues, including the base, down to these carved figures, all of the candles and high resolution textures on the stone walls, which look super detailed when close up like this, but then don't hammer performance when the player is further away. The scaling is one of the things that makes UE5 produce such realistic looking graphics. The particle effects look awesome. I mean, this game just looks all around beautiful. And coming from a small studio, again, it goes to show how UE5 is democratizing AAA game development. Moving on to another upcoming game, Helldivers 2 has just received a gameplay trailer and it's looking pretty interesting. These sorts of co-op shooters with hectic gameplay generally sacrifice on graphical fidelity but Helldivers is looking pretty good. This is the PlayStation 5 version, so I imagine that it will look even better on the PC. The lighting effects reflecting on the character models look really cool, as do the particle effects, which really add to the chaotic nature of the game. From the developer of Ill, an upcoming game I've covered in the past, we got a demo called Forest God. There's no indication from the developer if this is a new game or just an animation project, but it sure looks cool. We need more black and white games. Pasquale also updated his Gothic Castle demo to Unreal Engine 5.2. The demo also features volumetric ground fog with dust particles using UE5's Niagara 
wire out technology, this is a really interesting alternative to real-time ray tracing, as the lighting looks incredibly realistic and accurate while requiring way less resources to run. And this is indeed running in real time. Obviously, it might not suit every game. In some instances, ray tracing might be the way to go, but it does go to show that you can get great results with alternative methods. Back to games, and another recently announced Unreal Engine 5 game is a new installment in the Phantom Blade series, Phantom Blade Zero, coming from Chinese developer Asgame. The game is giving off some Sekiro vibes, which if you're a fan should be good news, but if you have a life then you'll probably be passing on it. It's nice to see more high production games coming from Chinese studios, with the amount of people they have over there. It would be a waste of human potential if a healthy game development scene didn't arise. Most of their games in recent years have been mobile RPGs and gambling games. Not exactly exciting stuff. Now Unreal Engine gets the most attention when it comes to bleeding edge graphics tech, but an effort from a sole developer is bringing Path Tracing to Unity. True Trace Unity Path Tracer is being developed by Peyton on Twitter, and the project is available on GitHub for anyone to try out. What's interesting about this project is that it requires no fixed function hardware like RT cores. It's hardware agnostic and uses compute shaders to path trace the scene in real time, with very little impact to performance and realistic results for light, shadows and reflections. In the few demos shared by the developer, we can see interactive path traced objects running on a modest 2070 Super at 45 FPS. This is without the RT cores being used. It goes to show that given the resources and time, a lot can be done with current hardware without needing to brute force more fixed function hardware into GPUs. And last for today is this absolutely insanely detailed tropical forest running on UE 5.2. It features full high nanite foliage, lumen and virtual shadow maps that are over 190 high quality AAA unique assets used here. This is giving me vibes of the Argon forest map in Battlefield 1. Imagine a bolt action rifle based game in a tropical scenario like this. Oh, that's something I'd play. Curiously, the devs recommend an RTX 3080 for acceptable performance, but require as a minimum 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Something to chew on. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next installment in this series of graphics tech showcases.